We are in a clash of civilizations. It is simply a, a global geopolitical showdown. Instead of the detail, as I said, I'm going to sketch out the ideology that serves as a foundation. You're going to hang with me here, okay? If anybody starts nodding off, the guy next to him, hit him with their elbow, all right? We'll do that. We'll work together here. A little philosophical information here. But once I connect these dots, you will see that a new civilization is, is developing. It's a hybrid of an Islamic traditional 7th century mentality infused with a bizarre political mentality in current day 21st century to create a new civilization that's at once barbarian and at once Armani, uh, Al Qaeda and Armani. Okay? This new civilization is at once barbarian, but at once it's Al Qaeda in Armani. And it's confusing everyone, unless you spend the time to figure out what's going on. And once you do, you cannot be stopped. Here's where, here's where we're going. We have two worldviews in collision, this, this, these civilizations. We have what is traditionally known as the West. And that's essentially the political philosophy that grew out of the Judeo-Christian worldview. You guys are Jews, I'm a Christian, we got our kind of views put together. We have some theological disputes. I don't ever downplay that, they're serious disputes. But at this point in history, you don't want to kill me, I don't want to kill you. We're together on this thing, all right? Is it a deal? Can we go that way? Sometimes some of you do want to kill me, but that's a different kind of problem. Um, we have classic Islam, and when I say classic Islam, Islam hides behind this, this amorphous way of saying, well, that's not us, that's a different part of Islam. We're over here, you know, that's a different denomination. Well, there's classic Islam, which comes from four legal schools, comes out of the university in Cairo, Egypt. Very interesting place, uh, Cairo, Egypt. And it's the center, if you will, it's the Vatican of, uh, of radical Islam. But it's not radical, it's traditional Islam. You're a radical Islamist if you don't follow traditional Islam, okay? And traditional Islam wants you dead. That's simple, that's the way, that's the way it is. Well, we have this traditional Islam joining together with the international left. The, the, the mentality that simply says, and we see this in European countries, big government is very good, personal civil rights are decreased, um, the, the re redistribution of wealth is important, and the hatred of Jews is foremost, okay? The, the unifying factor of this new civilization that stands antithetically to the West, which is the Judeo-Christian worldview, is the hybrid of the international left and classic Islam. That is the clash of civilizations within which the flotilla took off. Out of Turkey, most of those boats. Hamas led. Um, the, the protests against Israel in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, all over the United States, there's about a hundred of them being planned right now, grow out of this Civiliz this new civilization, very important to understand that. There's, there's theological distinctions between the West, Judeo-Christian viewpoint, and this new hybrid civilization. And some of the distinctions are simply that in the Judeo-Christian world, it's, if, you, if you look at the scriptures, the, the essence of the message is to sacrifice yourself for others. I mean, it really comes down to that. As a Jew, as a Christian, we're to live for other people. We're to give our lives if necessary for other people. Conversely, see, one of the reasons why we give our lives for other people is because there's a, a, an eternal plan. There's a, there's a world after this world. So this isn't all that there is. And we don't just live for today. And we know there's something else. So there's a greater reward awaiting us. And we live in, in the anticipation of that, living for today, doing the right thing. Conversely, notwithstanding the uh, eschatological viewpoints of Islam, 
and the, the international left, they live for this moment. It isn't self-sacrifice that's predominant. It's submission to Islam that's predominant. Necessarily, Islam has an agenda that says Allah is the right God. The Jews blew it. They were supposed to take Torah and get Torah out to everybody. They dropped the ball. Christians were supposed to pick it up, drop the ball. Here we are now, and the Jewish religion and the Christian religion have failed. We have an obligation to submit them to us for Allah's sake. Muslims pray five times a day. Sunrise, afternoon, noon, afternoon, evening, sunset. Every one of those days they, they pray the first seven um, verses of, uh, of the first surah. The seventh verse prays death and destruction against Jews and Christians. And our government is endorsing, the United States government for years now has endorsed the public use of public money for prayer opportunities, for a prayer that calls for the condemnation of, of Jews and Christians. But nobody knows this stuff. Nobody understands this. This is the clash of civilizations. So we have a political left and a classic Islam joining together, creating a very serious situation for, uh, for Jewish people in this world. One of the dynamics, that's the nature of this clash of civil, civilization. One of the dynamics that creates a greater problem is the fueling of this clash of civilizations. This new civilization, this hybrid group, is being fueled in three different ways. The first way it's being fueled is by uh, what many analysts are calling the Persian bomb. Okay? We, we have the Arab bomb already, the, the Pacs have that. Um, Iran, which is a Persian nation first, um, Islamic by religion, uh, they need to have the Persian bomb. And their quest for that, just the other day they have enough junk now for two bombs and they're developing delivery systems. If they obtain um, all the parts and they're maybe months away, uh, then the, the the clash of the civilization is going to magnify in geometric proportion. The Middle East will be so fundamentally destabilized that the Persian Empire will force its strength militarily on smaller Islamic countries and, and just bring them under its control, ultimately to bring about as the Shias, that's a Shia country, not a Sunni country, to bring about um, I'm going to do a all-day workshop on this stuff in the next 30 days uh, to detail all of this information, go through it in, in very precise manner. We're calling it the, um, the Israel Defense Project, and you can get information when you leave. But we'll go into this, which shows that the, the desire of, of Iran is to bring the Mahdi around, the 12th Imam. And in order to do that, there's got to be a destabilizing situation in Jerusalem. And the bomb will result in destabilizing or destroying Jerusalem. And this clash of civilizations, right now it's being fought in newspapers in the United States, will be a horrendous, ca catastrophic scenario if Iran gets the bomb. In my opinion, based upon my study with many CIA and military analysts, there is no way that Iran can get the nuclear bomb without the world changing as it is. Israel is going to have to strike Iran. A lot of people believe, and I'm one of them. Big issues we're discussing tonight. The Persian bomb is fueling this clash of civilizations. The internet, www, World Wide Web, is fueling this clash of civilizations because now, in the quietness of a room, a 17-year-old can get on any jihad website anywhere he wants to and become trained as what's called a lone wolf. And you don't need too many lone wolves to cause massive destruction in an open and free society. You have an armed guard at a religious institution in the United States of America. Think about that, please. An armed guard, and he better be armed, and people in this room ought to be armed, in my opinion, because you guys are under a serious threat. 
You have an armed guard from a religious institution in, not in Detroit, not in Harlem, in Boca Raton, Florida. Wake up, folks. The dangers and the threats of this dangerous and deadly world have reached into your shore. But there's hope.